Welcome back to the Checkpoint Reach podcast. This is a gaming podcast that covers the occasional movie news as well. I'm your host, Luke Eldon, and as ever, I'm joined by my fellow gamers and friends, Sud, Matty, and Perks. How are you doing, guys? Very good, yeah. Uh, having a nice week so far, so yeah, all good. good. It's, it's only just begun. Yeah, it's so only I'm, just begun, I'm, so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you're no, well, I thought I'd bring it up because it's, today's apparently, uh, what is it, the worst, the most depressing day of the year, Blue Monday, whatever they call Jesus, it. Jesus, so. we better look out for Perks. I, th- I thought we'd, you know, try and brighten everyone up for the podcast today. So. Perks, are you okay, brother? I was going to make the point that each passing day is the most depressing day of the year, but yeah. <laughs> I'm good. How's it going? <laughs> good. Well, I'm glad you're good. I didn't actually know that about the most depressing day. Mm. Yeah, Blue Monday today. So, mm, well, cheer up, guys. Come on. Let's, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's have a nice podcast. Well, yeah, wash away those blues with this podcast, hopefully. So, how are you doing, Matt? I'm all right, yeah. Good. Um, good. Blue Monday, I'm still still surviving, hanging on in there. <laughs> That's the main thing. It's always good to hear. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we'll start with our first topic today, which is actually going to be Anthem. Uh, we spoke about this last week, uh, which was a bit more off topic, so we didn't go into as much detail as we would have liked, and obviously we had some feedback on that. So this week we've decided to go a little bit more in depth on it, um, and as a result I'll let Perks take it away, because obviously you drew, drew the comparisons with Destiny last week, so obviously you want to explain more, elaborate more on those points. Yeah, sure. And I'm more than happy to do that whilst bringing you guys in at parts as well. Um, During sort of the chat we had last week, I I think my exact phrase was that Anthem was just a combination of Destiny and Mass Effect. And if you didn't like that, uh, if you didn't like Destiny, then you won't like Anthem, period. Um, We talked about how that was based on the IGN exclusive from that week in particular. And... Maybe that came across as a bit of an ignorant statement in the grand scheme of things, or as a bit of a throwaway comment, which maybe was based without sort of any kind of foundational knowledge. It seemed like something that was quite easy to say. And, you know, I accept that, which is probably based in, you know, quite heavily around some of the feedback that we received. And good news is today is that we've got a lot more time to discuss things in further detail. So I'm just going to kick us off with... uh, really where the comments led us to last week um following on from the guys who said that we weren't too knowledgeable on anthem itself there was some comments about the loot type system as well which i referenced that it was quite similar to destinies and really i was talking about the way in which the loot would be acquired rather than the actual loot itself right so you can always find similarities in in any game that would have you know, whether it was a shooter looter or looter shooter, whichever way you'd want to call it, yeah. or an RPG element, any, you know, any game that has loot in it, you could say, oh, I draw comparisons to that. Yeah, a lot of games um, take different elements, don't they, from each other? Yeah, so I was having a bit of more of a think about it earlier today, and I was thinking it's not just shared world shooters like Division and Destiny, because they're obvious, right? There's games that have loot systems like mass effect has a loot system and that's not a shared world shooter fallout has a loot system and neither is that you've got some more prominent examples like you know warframe which is big and current these days you know world of warcraft's been around for years so the 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 response that we had that it was more like diablo than destiny I wasn't shutting down other options. You know, I wasn't saying that loot systems don't exist anywhere else other than Destiny, and it looks like Destiny, and that's it, full stop. That was just my opinion, because Destiny is a shared world shooter, and so is Anthem. So I think it's quite important to make that distinction at this point, right? I wasn't saying that it, you know, nothing else matters, and it's, it's not relevant because it's not Destiny. It's just why not keep it sort of cohesive in the sense that if we're going to compare a shared world shooter to something, why not let it be another shared world shooter, if that makes sense? I think uh, people should know as well that you're actually a big... Well, people know you're a big Destiny fan, but you're also looking forward to Anthem, aren't you? So you're not coming at it from the side of, 
oh, I hate this game, or, you know, let's throw negativity at it or anything like that. Yeah, it probably sounded a bit that way last week. I think I'll probably have to throw the caveat out there that I actually think I'll really enjoy Anthem. I love shared world shooters. It's not just Destiny. I like the theme. It's one of my favorite genres. So with all the hours that I've logged on similar type games, I feel that I'm in a good enough position to know what to expect. Um, obviously, that's going to be based around speculation. And whilst we have seen more than just the sort of 10 minutes we touched on last week, uh, and it is sometimes we can speculate based on our own sort of knowledge of past games and see if we can see something that we think is similar or, you know, what we've seen in developer streams or, you know, exclusive reveals like we touched on last time. So, I mean, it, only time will tell, I guess, you know, once the game actually ramps up how accurate I'll be with my speculation. But I do think that I'm in a good enough place to to have quite a strong opinion on that. Yeah, just one point I wanted to make. Um, I think that's an important point you make, Luke, saying uh, that, you know, I think we all we all want the game to do well, don't we? It's not like any of us hold any sort of grudge against the game or the developers. I think we all want we all want the game to do well, you know, specifically for Bioware, I suppose, as well, because we're obviously all Bioware fans, especially the Mass Effect series, and we've seen how Bioware have been treated um, recently in the last, well, say five years or so. It's not been great, has it? So, you know, we want Bioware to do well, and I think we're all hoping that Anthem can be the game that revitalizes uh, Bioware and uh, brings them further forward. Um, it's just that we, you know, we just... You know, there has been concerns about the game, and I think that's fair. I think it's fair enough for us to try and address those concerns or concerns we have going in. Um, but there's still a lot of positives to take from the footage we've seen. I think. I mean, watched a couple of trailers recently, and there's, there's a lot of good things in there. As you know, and there's a few things that you might, yeah, uh, you know, argue are similar to Destiny. Or whatever. I know people hate that comparison. It seems, but. But there's also things where you can say, well, it, this is why it, this is why it differs from Destiny, and is more like other games, and maybe it, even something completely new we haven't seen before. So, so let's look at those things we've seen so far. Then there's four types of javelin at launch. I think we might see another one or two appear throughout the game's lifespan. But we've got the Ranger, Colossus, the Storm, and the Interceptor as well. They're all unique, and they carry a sense of individuality in comparison to each other which is nice it's expected but it's nice the colossus for example feels heavy and strong and the interceptor feels incredibly smooth and sleek to use for example you've got the storm which probably isn't best suited in the heat of the battle and is maybe going to turn into a support type class and yeah i like the fact that they all look like they're going to feel completely differently to each other the names are They've, a bit of a giveaway as well, aren't they, to what they do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Colossus, which is going to be the one hiding at the back sniping. It's um, <laughs> it's the standard kind of things we've seen before, but look, it works really well, so I've, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. And all the classes have got their specific abilities, and I think it will be a lot of fun to experiment with how they're going to work in tandem with each other. I actually think it's going to be really difficult to decide which javelin... I'm going to Maine when the game first launches and I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that you start off as the ranger and then, you know, as things progress early game, you're going to have the choice to to unlock the different paths. So I have no idea how I'm going to make my decision. I think I'm probably going to go with the storm to begin with, but I guess watch this space. I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's always good, though, to have options, isn't it? Especially in games like this. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny you mention options there because one thing that I'm really pleased that they've included is the preset custom loadouts for your gear. So whilst it doesn't particularly affect the, the javelin as such, it's, it's more for sort of your your gear, your weapons. You know, it, it gives you that sort of on-the-fly flexibility and you don't feel so sort of restricted within your loadouts thinking, you know, you're going to uh, have to be sort of restricted within that same, this is the gun I'm running in slot one, slot two. And it's going to be forever before I can change that, or it's going to take me a lengthy pause to swap around all my equipment and find out where I left something before. Mm-hmm. It's It looks really cool, and I think games like this need features like that. Hey, you want to use Loadout 1? It's already there. It's preset. Loadout 2? 
And that, that's a really great feature, in my opinion. Like I said, it's that on-the-fly feeling of flexibility. And you don't have to sort of feel bogged down changing in and out between battles or missions. You can get to it quickly, which is great. Yeah, it looks like they've approached difficulty a bit differently than in Anthem. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think we'll talk more about the mission styles later on. I know Sud's got some views on that. But I mean, in summary, for the time being, we know we've got easy, medium and hard. And the end game also has the Grandmaster difficulties too. And personally, this is where I absolutely agree with our commenter from last time round in the, in the snippet that we released uh, regarding their Diablo reference. And I will come back to that reference again shortly, but I really like this. And it adds to the replayability and it should hopefully provide sort of something for everyone at every time, which is surely something that everybody wants. Yeah. Well, you'd, you'd think so, wouldn't you, really? Yeah. It seems to be a positive. Definitely. And I, I'll sort of put out there sort of at the beginning so we can get this out of the way. I haven't forgotten about my Mass Effect comment from last time out. I'm going to try not to pay sort of too much reference to it as things go by, so I'll sort of nail it for the time being. When I see the sort of fast and fluid combination of the weaponry and the abilities, it screams Mass Effect to me. And... That's a good thing. I'm definitely not criticizing that. When I look at the weapons in particular and the design that they have, and as, as a random example to pull out of nowhere here, some of the detail that I've seen when aiming down the sights of a sniper rifle or the way the pistols look when you hip fire them, just look at it. I mean, the, the, the enemy health bars, the shield bars, the, the armors, the way it's sort of distinguished with the different colors... Look at how the buffs and the debuff abilities work um, for, for each javelin. These things could have been pulled directly from Andromeda or any other Mass Effect. And this is a really good thing. It's something that's been strong every time it's been present, every time Bioware have used it. And that's where I get that from. And again, that's a good thing. I'm not saying that's negative in, in any sort of way, shape or form. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm quite a big fan actually of how the design and layout of that sort of thing uh, stuff is on Mass Effect. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Yeah, I think with the combat in particular, that's what says Mass Effect to me rather than anything else. And I think the combat in Andromeda was really good. Actually, it's one of the best points uh, parts of the game. <laughs> yeah, um, let's just stay away from the sort of graphical design and and the things that happened within the programming and coding but the, the combat was strong and the generally speaking mass effect combat has always been strong for its time you look back now sometimes some things sorry might look a little bit dated but at the time mm, ball mass it, effect one i don't know even at the time i'm not sure if i liked it yeah, <laughs> mass effect two I mean, though what an improvement. yeah two was was super strong and three story aside uh, if we're focusing directly on the combat it it worked so mm -hmm. i'm pleased to see sort of bioware bringing this forward and I'll just sort of finish off there by saying it's not just Destiny or Mass Effect, by the way, of comparisons. I mean, we, we could go into this in, in so much more detail, but when I think we all saw the, the giant bullet sponge swarm tyrant boss, the display was more akin to a, a Lost Planet or a Monster Hunter World style boss. So there's definitely more general comparisons out there if you, if you really wanted to make them. Yeah, for sure. However, after seeing the new gameplay footage, and um, obviously what you've just mentioned, do you still think it has similarities to Destiny? Mm, I think that sets me up perfectly with what I'm about to say, really. like I will freely admit that today I'm going to be drawing many comparisons to Destiny. And I think I'd be crazy not to do that, because if I didn't, then I'd be sort of abandoning my opinion on what I said last week. So... Whilst there are a sort of shed load of other comparisons out there that you can make generally, and I'm not denying that, that doesn't make them wrong or it doesn't make me right, and that's the bottom line. I'm just doing that to more so focus on what Anthem's direct competition will be, generally speaking, going forward. So the part that I really wanted to start with really is, is to follow on from the comment about the loot uh, specifically. 
I'm going to be looking at things like random rolls for the weapons and the gear. So rather than, for example, you pick up a sniper rifle and it's the same sniper rifle every single time, you know, how many different variations of sniper rifle A can we get before it goes to sniper rifle B and so on and so forth? Uh, like we we have saw in Destiny in the past, they did a fantastic job of that in Destiny 1. It was one of the things that made it so addictive. They took it away at the beginning of Destiny 2 and it fell flat because you had gun number one, gun number two, gun number three, and there was no variety in between. Once you'd achieved everything in that sense, well, there was nothing else left to grind for and nothing else left to do. So coming back to the point that it's not just Destiny-style loot and the way that it's achieved, yeah, that's, especially when you think about games like Diablo, like our commoner said last time around, there, there's more variety, right? So you could find a sword and then find the same sword 10 minutes later that has different roles. So it it has more to it than just sort of the cut and dry. Here's the sword, if that makes sense. Um, I'm looking at the unique identity, the you know how the individual loot actually feels within Anthem. You know how much of a difference does it really make? Is it worth the grind and so on? Things like that. I mean, how would you guys want to see the loot system? Would you want to see the more sort of very random rolls, or would you be happy with straight down the middle? I've got this gun. I never need to get it again. Well. One point you just made there about, I think it's actually quite an important sort of comment is, is it worth the grind? And that's probably the biggest question, isn't it? You know, I think for players going in, it's like, you know, there's certain equipment where, you know, we've seen in games before where you just kind of, you know, gathering it and it's not really, it doesn't really mean anything, does it? Like, it's just like, oh, it's it's the next step on the road to getting more powerful, which I think can get a bit boring at times if, if it's just you know, you sort of, something that's level 30, for example, and then, you know, an hour later, you get something that's level 31, but it looks exactly the same, and it's just, all it is really is a bit of a power boost. It's kind of like, you know, kind of a bit boring, isn't it? So you kind of want the loot to be something a bit more meaningful, I think. Like, you know, maybe the design of it, or how it looks, or certain uh, powers that it has, or something like that, because I think, I think that, I think people do get a bit, fed up of loot when it's sort of a, the same old thing over and over again. Like, just a bit more powerful. I think there needs to be something that differentiates it. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you there, So I, I would like... Um, yeah, I'd like a bit more options on the loot, and obviously, as, as a result, it gives you a lot more uh, attachment, I guess, to different loots yeah. that you can find as a result. Um, that's something I would want more varied, a bit more... I don't know. I think it'd just be a bit more exciting, wouldn't it? You know, when you yeah. have the opportunity of getting loot rather than just having the straight one, two, three sort of system. Well, well another point as well, I think you say about the random rolls and stuff is, you know, say if you're about to do a quest and, you know, because on a lot of these games now, you you kind of know, well, on certain games anyway, especially, I'm, I, can't, I can't actually remember, you have to clarify this on Destiny, but when you do a quest, you know what, you, sometimes you know what you're going to get at the end of the quest like you know the piece of equipment you're going to get yeah you can yeah. know that you'll get a powerful reward yeah. or a legendary re- reward there's mm. specific exotic quests so, in which you know what yeah. the exotic is at the yeah. end of it but those things aren't very common so no yeah i guess it kind of makes I think, sense i think what i'd like to see and I'd, you know what i'd like to see happen is some sort of system where you know when you do a certain quest you know exactly the, the you know the level it's going to be um you know, it can vary a little bit, but you know, you know that it's going to be better than what you've got. And also, especially if it's a hard quest. And also, um, I'd want to, I'd want there to be some system where there's options of maybe you can get between maybe three and five different types of equipment, and they kind of vary. That'd give a bit of replayability as well with the missions. Um, although, uh, but then I suppose you could come at the argue will everyone have the same equipment, which. Is a, I suppose is a problem in these type of games. You know, if it may, if they make it too generous, then well, that's my point on yeah, random rolls. And, and by the it's way, it's tough. important to state that Anthem is going to have random rolls on weapons. Yeah. So my point is that, say for example, the four of us were playing in co-op and we did the same mission. That and I'm not saying that there is a mission that guarantees this, but the reward at the end of that mission is a hand cannon, and yeah. we'd all get different versions of the same hand cannon. So my roll might be garbage, yours might be decent. Luke might have. Uh, a sort of mid to high level roll and Matt might get the best roll, the god roll if you like on that gun and 
we'd be thinking, oh, we well, we need to go again. We need to try and get that, but it could take us a long time to do it. But yeah. the random roll gives you that sort of replayability. So I'm quite happy for them to to have things like that in the game because I don't like the idea of doing, say, one quest that you find in the world and once I've done it, then that's it forever. I've got that gun and there's no variety to that gun. So, you know, once I've done it and once you've done it, it's the same thing, bottom line. We can find that again in different activities. It can roll better, it can roll worse. It gives the loot a, a reason sort of to, to keep on grinding, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, even if, um, you know, because I'm, I was thinking more when you get really high level, really far into the game, when things become sort of, well, you're the highest level, you can't get anything that's more powerful. But maybe if they did quests when you're all that high level where it's like, okay, you're not going to get something that's more powerful because of the level cap, the, you know, the, the cap of the weapon. But you could get maybe a really cool design or something, you know, something really cool rather than just like, oh, I don't know, like a, a slight color variation or something. Maybe something that, I don't know, the weapon looks a bit different or it's got, you know, it doesn't have to. I mean, you know, especially with, again, like um, that we're dealing with, with Destiny and with Anthem, it doesn't have to be realistic, does it? It doesn't have to be like, like machine guns or anything like that. It can be, you know, it can you be can really wacky make weapons. Up anything. Yeah. Also, so, you know, I mean, I know some people don't like that aspect of it when they start getting too wacky, but I think most people would say that they'd like variety. You know, if you're going around and looking at other players, you don't want to see the same gun on everyone, do you? I so, think as long as it's not overpowered, wacky. Yeah. Well, yeah. People are more acceptable of it. Mm, I think you'll see a similar system than you've, you've seen across the board in games like this. The uncommon, the unrare type weapons that you yeah. get from the get-go are going to look quite samey, um, you know, regardless of the roles on them. It's it's not going to have too much variety, but the ones that look really cool will be the legendary gear, as it's called in thousands of other games. Now they're, they're going to be the highest level gears, the legendary ones, and I'm sure they'll be the ones that look really sort of specific and unique. So... That, that's typically the way things are done anyway. Like Destiny has its exotics, which all look very, very different to any other gun you can find. Um, I'd like to imagine that with Anthem, you'll probably see that the legendary gear weapons is all sort of unique, has quite a, a unique ID to it, if you will. Yeah. I think that's probably a good point to move on, really, to, to the next comment that we had was in relation to my slightly negative comment about, kind of on the topic of loot, but I made the comment last time out about how the open world activities were kind of the same to me. At least they looked like they'd be kind of the same to me. That's how they've been presented in pretty much everything we've seen from Anthem so far uh, is what you can do in Destiny. So that's when you're sort of free roam in the world, whether you're taking part in uh, public events or adventures or whatever they're going to call their versions of Lost Sectors, which I'm sure will be in there. I mean, I wasn't complaining that they're, they're giving you things to do. If it came across that way last week, I mean, obviously they're going to give you things to do to achieve the loot. Um, I was quite complaining about the fact that it's... Let me put it to you this way. My thoughts were, why would they present these activities in a way that historically people don't seem to like in this genre specifically? Because there's because... no innovation in the genre. Well, yeah, I mean, that that's, that could hit the nail on well, the head. Well, honestly, like, just listening to this, uh, all I was thinking, all you've been talking about is RNG, blue, you know, the progression cycle, the end game cycle. It just comes to a more important question for me. It's like, why are you even playing this game to begin with? Because the last time I checked, like, games were supposed to be fun. And I couldn't really care less about the end game content. I mean, most people aren't going to get that far, or if they do they're not going to carry on playing at that point. I just feel like this this whole sort of shared world shooter, the Division, Anthem, Destiny, whatever one they'll release next, it's sort of missing the point that the core mechanics have to be fun. Like There has to be some continual like enjoyment of the game for people to want to play it. Like Fortnite's so successful with its skins and its continual progression, but it's just fluff. You know, you can still play that game with nothing, you know, come in, you know, two years after with no skins, no weapons or whatever, and you can still enjoy the game because the core mechanics are fun. I just feel like 
getting caught up too much in you know what weapons what what quests and stuff like that are going to be in the game is the game going to be fun yes or no that's all i care about i think people who play those type of games who play destiny or and will be playing on will probably disagree with you and probably say it is fun to them to some people like grinding continually for loot might be fun but personally that's not something that i'd ever find entertaining especially when it's just repeating the same rinse and recycle quests the same rinse and recycle mechanics you know you're fighting the same boss but this boss is you know got more health because he's a higher level or you know his weapons do more damage or just some slight variation to the same quest i think it's becoming a tired formula and i think the same thing's going to happen to anthem it's been hyped up ea are going to hype it up to all hell and after two weeks people are going to say yeah that was enjoyable and then 90 percent of the player base will drop off so the 10 percent that are left i'm sure that you know the progression system will interest them because that's all they've got left to to sort of aspire to in the game or sort of left to grind towards and some people enjoy that and i understand that but most people just want the game to be fun I'm sitting on that side of the fence. I probably won't play it for more than like three weeks if I do end up playing it. You know, it's, it's one of them things. Well, I guess the question would be to Perks. Um, cause obviously, you played Destiny the most out of all of us. What was it that kept bringing you back? Is Did you find it fun with the grind and the rewards of loot? Yeah, I think anybody that sort of takes part in these games on a regular basis has bought into the addiction of trying to get God Rolls of various types of weapons and gear and you know all that and trying to sort of you know max out their exotic collections it's you know that that is a big part of things and you know there's no sort of right or wrong to it there's nothing wrong with thinking that's really boring and there's nothing wrong with thinking that's a load of fun um i guess really aside from the loot to sort of bring it back to the activities is that if they are going to be presented in the same way, and I'm not saying that they're presented in 100% cut and dry the exact same way, because of course there's similarities. But my point is, if if it's only minor differences between what Anthem will deliver and what we've already seen before, and obviously that's open to interpretation, that's just my opinion, the same thing will happen that Matt's just said, right? The, the majority of the audience will be turned away again because they'll think we've seen this before and then we'll be left with another game that has primarily a hardcore audience for the reasons we've just discussed and everything else is just sparsely populated there'll still be casuals but just not many there'll still be a few mid-range players but just not many and it will just be another case of sort of a top heavy hardcore game and that's not what I want from Anthem, even though, and that might sound strange because you guys will know that I'll probably see myself in that category. So, you know, I'm, I'm just not coming at it from a selfish point of view. You know, Anthem's a new IP. They don't have to conform to what we've sort of come to expect from games in this genre. They've got all the opportunity in the world to sort of break the boundaries and be creative and show how creative they can be. They've got a vastly open space. They've got a completely free sort of sci-fi world where they don't have to sort of abide by normality. They can do whatever they want with that. And sort of further in what I was about to say before is, is that, you know, Destiny has severe repetition of things like public events and adventures and lost sectors. People who've been playing from day one have done thousands upon thousands of those things to power level to get different things to help level up weapons you know whether that's with the enhancement core systems or grinding for world materials whatever it is there's too much focus on those things and it's impossible to know whether anthem will have that same thing because obviously look from the developer sort of commentaries and walkthroughs we've seen so far they're not going to show you hours of doing the same quests over and over again. You know, Bungie didn't do that with Destiny. They showed you the coolest things. And then the game released, and then the sort of the reality hits you with it. And I want to be wrong because 
you guys already know, I don't want to see Anthem fail. I want it to be quite the opposite. I want it to be the leading light in the shared world shooter genre. But I can't just sort of ignore the warning signs just because I want something to do well. I'm under no illusions that there's going to be a repetition of those open world sort of then they're not going to be called lost sectors and adventures within anthem that that's fine but they will have their versions of them and if you're forced to repeat them or or not forced but if you're encouraged to repeat them over and over and over again then that to me just that isn't fun and that's just a missed opportunity what would you guys think well one point i'd like to make well well it's kind of like not totally talking about what you were just talking about but one thing i would like to say is that i do think this genre must be it must be very difficult to make a game in this genre in this open world you know shared world shooter genre because it's not difficult everyone's just following well, the same template no i don't know i thought that because you have a, so you have one big hub Beta world for. and then you'll have you know five or six npcs as quest givers everyone does the same quests you know you can participate in the quest in four player co-op it's all the same so I think there's absolutely no innovation in this in this genre. I think it's just going down a, a sort of dead end corridor. Maybe where that's the limitations of technology. Maybe that's the limitations of development. They're obviously extremely expensive to develop. But it, I just I find it really boring. Like, and I know some people don't, and I completely understand that. But they're in the minority. The people that are left playing Destiny are in the minority compared to the people who bought it on day one. The people who are still playing Division now are in the minority compared to the people who play it on day one. So I just think, yeah, you're going to get that hardcore group that stay with the game for a long period of time. But I don't see any sort of progression in this entire sort of genre. It, I only see regression going forward unless they start to actually shake up the core mechanics of the game. There's only so many times you can play the same game in a different setting with a different coat of paint. And, you know... To be to be fair, there's people in the comment section that disagree. Maybe they they think they like the look of Anthem. That they're completely entitled to their opinions. I hope that they enjoy the game. But to me, the game doesn't look the same. Obviously, you play Anthem and you you put Destiny side by side and you showed someone the games. They don't look exactly the same. I mean, they're a different perspective for for one. You know, there there are different elements and mechanics of the game that are slightly different but the core mechanics of what you're going to be doing in the game which is rinse repeat quests you might get eight hours of quote-unquote story missions with some random cutscenes jammed in then when you finish that you're just going to get the same quest givers giving you the same quests some of those quests might be based on like a weekly timer some of them might be based on a daily timer but it mechanically at its core it is the same game that that's why that, that's where I disagree. To be honest, with people in the comment section. Well, the point right. I was going to make. Can I just if I can just yeah, finish sure. my point? That I was going to make was uh, that you can't please everybody, can you? There's, there's, you can can never please everybody with a game. It's just it's not it's not possible. You know, there's going to be certain people. You know, when the game first comes out, they're going to want to go through the story, have a, have a great story experience. And that's all they want from the game. They just want it to be the best story it can be, even in even in a game like this. You know, even even though, you know, there's going to be other people that don't care at all about the story. They couldn't. They don't care less about what happens in the story. All they want to get to is the post game content and playing with their friends online. So it's, you know, if you're the developer of Anthem, what do you do? Do you do you you know do you cater for the initial rush of people coming to the game, playing the story first time? Or do you cater to the more hardcore audience that are going to stick around with the game later on, even though that's a reduced amount? It's a tough decision to make. EA aren't going to care about end game content or post game players because they don't give them any money. Simple as that. They'll make the game look as as flashy as possible, and sort of. I hope it does have a have an actual meaningful story, but I somehow doubt that it will do. But you know, the, all of the trailers. They're looking flashy to get those initial sales because that's all that is going to matter to EA. Those initial sales are what make them all the money. So once those initial sales are done, EA are historically terrible at supporting games, post games. So I don't think that's got anything to do with Bioware or the game or whatever. EA are just a terrible publisher for supporting games after they've been released. How long does it take them to patch FIFA every year? It literally takes them like four months, even if the game's broken. And they do the same thing every year. 
they they bring the game out, it's terribly broken, and then they patch it four months later. You know, they're not they they, they can't even deliver consistent patches. So how you can expect them to constantly drip feed content for players that aren't giving them any money back is, I think, deluded if you think EA are going to do that at all. Well, I think the point you have to, about EA is, I mean, what angle do they come at it from? Do they come at it from the angle that you've just said of just get as many sales as possible early on and then not care after that? Or do they want Anthem to be a long-term thing? Because if they want it to be a long-term thing, then doing the former is not the best way of doing it, I think. I think if you want it to be a long-term thing, you've got to okay, it's the hardcore audience that sticks with the game. And, uh, you know, if they don't do that, then Anthem isn't going to be a thing. So it depends what they want, I suppose. Well, I think as a, as a quick the side note there, guys, going on from sort of, you know, financial and, and making money and stuff, there has been released already that they are going to be releasing free DLC for this game. So... Yeah, but they've announced that with like games before, and it's like a hat or something. Yeah, that counts as the free DLC. That's a very yeah. vague term. Free of course DLC. it is. Of course it is. I, I do think they're going to have to release at least for a while. Maybe they'll change as things goes on, but they're going to have to release something substantial to begin with because too many people would be sort of burnt by that, if you like. And one thing I'd say is, you know, you said before about, um, well, you know, they're going to release 3 so it's usually just a hat or something like that. Yeah, fair enough. But if you look at Battlefield 5, I mean, the EA obviously publishes that and they've done the same thing with Battlefield 5, haven't they? They've said all the DLC will be free, all the map parts mm. will be free. So this is maybe just a new tack from EA. So well, maybe we don't to about Based to on what they've said so far, it does seem like it's going to be quite a, a substantial sort of trip of, of DLC that, that's free. I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I don't know if they'll stick with the it's forever. But it seems, at least if we're taking them at face value, that it's going to be a good thing. Yeah, this is what I was going to say. It depends on the initial sales as to whether they're going to support it or not. And, and this isn't even in the way you think. I think if it sells well, they're less likely to bother with it going forward because they've already got the money in the coffers. I think the reason that they're they're sort of desperate to provide sort of post game content for Battlefield Five is because no one's bought it. Like compared to other battlefields, it sold absolutely shockingly this this winter. So obviously they're going to have to sort of the game's out there. It's in boxes. It's in retailers. It's on on the digital storefront. They're going to have to find some way to try and get people to jump into the game, whether that's adding a battle royale mode or or whatever it is they do going forward. But that's to try and recoup some of the losses from the game. And I think if Anthem sells badly, they're going to do a similar sort of sort of ploy. Maybe make mm-hmm. it free, give you a free trial. They do they do that quite a lot. EA they have like a, a week free trial of games. They didn't do that but, with Andromeda though, did they? Once the sales were bad on that, they basically just abandoned ship. Yeah, stop the DLC. Die. Yeah, stop the DLC. All the there wasn't. Stuff. Yeah, there wasn't really as much. There was an online mode on that, but it was a terrible sort of you know four player co op. Just generic four player co op wave based yeah, defense. It was like game. Horde mode, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just Horde mode in, in a Mass Effect skin. So obviously, there, there wasn't really much to support with that going forward. So, well, another thing as well is because of, because, um, you know, eventually down the road it'd be on A access, wouldn't it? In like, what, two years or something like that? So if they're losing players, they can just use that as a sort of, oh, look, well, it's on A access now. And that'll g- gain a number of players for it being free. So. That's another thing in their favour, I suppose. Like I said, I, I, I do hope it does well. I'm not going to sit here and hope that any game fails. I'm not, not really about that, you know. Now, obviously, um, there's a lot of developers that have put a lot of time and effort into the game, and I hope that it's another successful game. There's been a lot of them last year, and I, I hope that this year starts off with a bang as well. I just, I've had bad feelings about it since day one, and I hope they don't come true, but I just have a feeling they will do. Hmm. I think whilst you're focusing on the game there as, as a whole, I think it's important to actually bring it back to the game itself. And I want to just focus for the next few minutes at least on the ways that they've revealed that you can actually play the game. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in sort of quotation marks, as you will, if you will, because I've, I've sort of took the time to actually write this down to make sure I get it word for word correct. So they've said, um, when they're introducing what you can do within the game, they've said the following. You can continue your story mission, pick up quests from people in the fort, enter a stronghold, or explore the open world in free play. And that's the sort of end of their sentence. And when I heard that sentence, and 
it, it, it kind of got me thinking, right? So I sort of made my own version of it, and I've only made the smallest amendments. I've changed two words in the whole thing. So let me read my sentence. Let me read you what I heard. You can continue your story mission, pick up quests from people in the tower, enter a raid, or explore the open world in free play. And I don't know if any of you guys noticed what I did there, but all I did was swap two words in the whole sentence, and I literally just described Destiny, not Anthem. And you're going to get a lot of haters. Yeah, you're going to have to be careful <laughs> with that one. I think. Yeah, but here's the thing. It's true. It's almost word for word the exact same thing. I changed the tower, if you will, and the raids in Destiny, and, and all they've done is called it the Fort and the Strongholds. So it's, it's you know... Well, this is what the, I was saying to you before. You know, the, the point that I was making before, there's regression in this genre of game because everyone's just making the same game. But I don't mean, like, there might be another skin on it, there might be different guns, there might be different mechanics, it might be a different world, but the core mechanics are the same and the core mechanics are getting dated. People mm. don't enjoy them they know what they're going to get from it and obviously like I've, I've, I've just touched on there's going to be that hardcore sect of players that really enjoy the game and buy into that but i think more and more people don't really care about this sort of genre of game and i think that's probably a bad thing for anthem because it's coming out you know it's been in development for a number of years and obviously it needs a lot of sales we're assuming just based on how much time and effort um, ea seems to have pumped into it and bioware so, you know, it, it needs it needs that like success story, but I just think people are getting bored of doing the same thing over and over again, just in a different skin. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it will come down to the success or failure of the strongholds that I've just mentioned. And I, I will actually admit here that I'm being a little bit facetious because strongholds and raids are different things at heart. And you know, I'm fully aware of that but I'm just trying to sort of bring together the similarity and what they're saying and what they're actually offering. So with the Strongholds, that would be Anthem's versions of dungeons, if you like. And in comparison to Destiny, the, the one thing that I will say here is that Destiny has nowhere near enough dungeon-type activities. There's a couple of quests like... Uh, the Shard Throne, the Whisper of the Worm missions, which are really cool and they're really fun, and you think, God, this game needs more of them. But it doesn't have them. So if Anthem has a bunch, and and I mean a lot, I don't just mean one or two or three, an abundance of unique-type stronghold activities that do give you a reason to keep playing, and it's not just the same one every week or every other week if they're on a rotation we don't know how they're going to actually work yet in, in the grand scheme of things then i think that would be a really good thing if they can deliver on sort of go hard or go home on their dungeon game because that's what games like this that are sort of existing in the current space they lack i mean that they have them but there's nowhere near enough of them so if Anthem delivers 100% sort of hard-hitting in, in terms of its strongholds and there's loads and loads of unique ones, the rewards are all cool, they seem satisfying, they'll probably take around 20 to 40 minutes to complete as a sort of rough estimate from what we've seen so far from the developers. That's going to be something that keeps people hooked in the long term. So, and they don't even need to be end-game activities, by the way. Yeah, sure, they're going to be a part of it. But they can introduce them along the way and they can drip feed you them in a way that lets you experience them throughout the sort of story progression and give you a taste for them. And rather than sort of hit you with one at the very end and go, here you go, this is what you do at the end. If they introduce them slowly but surely throughout the game and then there's a constant sort of supply of them as things go by, I think that would separate them in a really good way. And... Personally, I'm quite excited to see if they can pull that off because if they don't and if it's just two or three, maybe four strongholds throughout the, the game, I don't know. I just see that as being as being a missed opportunity. I mean, would you guys want to see dungeon type activities that were there on a on a sort of an abundance basis, or would you be happy for it to just be more more narrative based? And yeah, sure, if they throw a couple in, that's cool. But yeah, how how do you guys see it? 
I'd be more narrative based, personally. Um, you could throw in a few, but I guess that's the problem with me with these types of games. You know, I, I the, the foundations big time of the game. Yeah, exactly. It's big time commitment, and the foundations of these type of games don't appeal to me. Um, don't appeal enough to me anyway to put in a lot of time. So I prefer the narrative based, and I, you know, obviously I, I, I know that I won't get that the way I want it in Anthem, but I'm willing to give it a go. Surely the uh, answer is both. I mean, now that might be easier said than done. And I also think that that's probably like, you know, we were talking about um, innovation. And I think that's something on these type of games you're going to see more next gen, where they're going to be, you know, people are going to be expecting more and more for them next gen because of obviously the hardware limitations at the moment. That's also an issue at the minute with these type of games, I think. Um, But I think the answer is both, isn't it? Surely, Perks. I mean, surely you'd want to see more rich narrative experiences as well as more of these dungeon type activities. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the the free DLC actually sort of pertains to more narrative experiences. But I mean, with a game like this, and obviously I'm I'm sort of generalizing here again with the Shared World Shooter team, the the dungeon activities are the things that keep the game alive, right? The raid activities of the game are the things that keep the game alive through time. So there has to be something like that. It has to be strong. Um, Perhaps it is a pipe dream to to want both. I don't know. I think it's probably a cop-out to talk about sort of limitations, stopping them from from doing both. I mean, look, if if you were going to sort of... True, but the reality is our next generation, that you would imagine imagine some of those problems will not be there because of more powerful hardware. I think be able to do I, look, I agree to an extent, but I, I don't think that should get them off the hook for no, the I'm time being. But... I'm sure, look, if we were going to call it exactly how we'd want to see it, we'd want a shared world shooter that's genuinely shared, right? It doesn't matter if if you're a casual, a mid-tier, or hardcore player, you'd want the developer, whoever it is, to find a way to be able to reach all three types of players and those who fall in between and not suffer a massive sort of drop after a couple of weeks of the game being it's out. It's kind of a pipe dream, though, wishing to create a game that just appeals to everyone, isn't it? Exactly. So I, I it's not something that I think we'll see, which is why I'm focusing on what I think the game will actually need. Well, my biggest gripe with Destiny was that the end game content wasn't accessible for everyone. Like the raids especially weren't accessible for everyone. Um, the raids were the most enjoyable part of the game. Honestly, I think you'll probably agree with that, but it's like initially doing the raids is, is the best that Destiny can be. And I felt like constantly when I tried to join raids, despite my actual ability, um, it was just very snotty in terms of like who'd let you in to join a raid. Obviously, if you were under level, there was no point even being in the raid. It's just really crap, you know. And I wanted to enjoy that end game content, but I also didn't want to grind for you know fifty hours because I didn't have the time. And it's it's about I don't think it's so much as like striking the balance because obviously not everyone likes shooters. It's not a game. This is not a game that's going to appeal to everyone because not everyone enjoys this type of game. Not everyone enjoys sci-fi. But I think it's just appealing to all the players that actually buy the game because not everyone has got ten hours a day to play the game, grind to get to the top level. Some people might only have three, four hours a week to play, and I feel like constantly in these type of games, like players are being left out in a way. There has to be some sort of way to balance it. Mm, like I agree. I think Destiny left players behind because, like you said, the the most exciting and the coolest thing that Destiny had was was the raid activities. There were six person fire team activities, and there was no matchmaking. And th- that that was a good thing, um, simply because these things were so mechanic heavy. Matchmaking and raids just wouldn't have gone hand in hand. They even tried matchmaking with a few Forge activities just lately in, in some of the more recent stuff. And something as simple as killing some enemies and throwing a ball into a Forge, people couldn't do. And that's why there was never matchmaking for it. But the the core problem was that the the best part about the game, people didn't even get to experience, or a, a, a large percentage of people didn't even get to experience. So... I mean, I always wondered about stuff like that, how they could sort of 
bring that content to those people who don't have the time to sort of know life it, if you will and just grind to, to high hell to get there maybe there could have been something like introductory raids maybe there could have been you know some public really raids sort of, i think that's the only answer no i, I disagree i think, I, I just like think public raids about, are gonna have to i i, I don't know how I, I i haven't seen anything on anthem's raids so how are they going to work is there going to be public and private raids or is it well, just private again no, with Anthem, and I, I was going to sort of come on to this from from the public type things that there's going to be matchmaking for the for the strongholds, okay. and that's so well, that's because, more like the strike type activity, isn't it, rather than the raid? Yeah, but that's what they're sort of focusing on at the moment. Now, yeah. I'm I'm going to be honest here. I think there's probably going to be something kept under wraps for the for the sort of real end game that we haven't heard about yet. That could be pie in the sky that could be a load of nonsense from me but i would be surprised with a game like this if there wasn't something hidden sort of deep below the surface that we're not going to get to know about until we get there but i think it's a positive move that the strongholds can be accessed by everybody i'm sure the limitations will come down to power level or it's actually called gear score in anthem which is power level or light level from destiny um the, these strongholds will have requirements i'm sure because whilst there's going to be sort of public matchmaking for it you couldn't have a level one and a level 60 playing in the same activity i just don't think that works so it's good that they're not restricting the strongholds in the way that destiny's restricted the raids I do have a slight concern about the the actual content of the strongholds themselves because me personally, I quite like mechanics. As much as I like shooting things in the face and just progressing and getting rid of bullet sponge bosses, the mechanics are what make it cool to me. And I really like figuring things out and having that sort of satisfying feeling when you've spent a good few hours trying to understand something you finally do it and it all comes together and that's where you get the sort of amazing moments with your fire teams in destiny did you try and figure out the puzzle a couple of weeks back that no one could do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we touched on this didn't we i think i ended up watching it online because i wasn't i didn't have enough time to be playing the game just then anyway so i saw it but you know destiny has a has a storied history in terms of succeeding with things like that i'm sure anthem will have its own take on things like that even though i absolutely know that it's not going to be a massive part of the game i think they are definitely trying to appeal to more players more often and not cut sort of percentages out of their audience like destiny did probably not intentionally well definitely not intentionally they probably assume that everybody would want to grind to the end and everybody would want to see the end game stuff and I see Anthem coming at it from a slightly different angle there, which I think will probably be a good thing overall. Just, I just want to go back to the point you make about the raids because I'm not, I'm not sure you answered it as fully as I'd like to have done with the part about this whole the separation between the private and public side of the raids. Now I know Destiny obviously only has private, and and I think most of the hardcore fans obviously would agree that's the best way. But I think there was a lot of more casual fans that would at first would have argued, well it stopped them from progressing more. The fact that, you know, you know, some people don't want to be, you know, looking online for these clans and stuff like that, that they know that, that they know they're going to be judged instantly as soon as they start that raid. If they're not, if in the first couple of minutes they're not, up to, you know, up to any sort of scratch or anything, they're going to be completely shunned straight away. And I think that puts a lot of people off. And that was my point about why is there not some sort of tier system where, you know, if you want the best gear and the absolute best gear the game can offer, then yeah, you're going to have to go in these private sessions where, you know, the gear's all level 50, whatever. But why is there not some sort of, like, middle end tier where the gear's level 30 is the most you can get from the raid? But it's the same raid, if that makes sense. Well, why can that not be a thing? Or a raid for beginners? Or I've never understood why that why Destiny never explored that. I think it would have made a lot more people a lot more accepting of the game and a lot more, sort of, maybe more welcoming. Because I think that's the problem with Destiny. It doesn't feel very welcoming, does it? If you're not a hardcore fan, oh no, and that's I one mean, of the big problems. I can vouch for if that. If you're I, coming into it now, I mean, I you, remember you, picking that yeah. up a couple. I remember perks. I was like, oh, I'll come on, Destiny with you for a bit. You know, I, I yeah. got it. I thought I'd try it. I was what 
three months late, too late to the party. And literally we got on and you, I was like, all right, yeah, uh, what, what do you want to do or what can we do? And you're like, mm, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do, oh, you know what? We'll just have a, we'll, we'll play a multiplayer part. Well, this That's is the pretty one, much, yeah. yeah. But I mean, That's so what, just, just yeah. to try and answer your question, I mean, what would the actual question be? Because you said a lot of things there that I can answer to. So okay, it's well, like, yeah, I'll, summarize I'll try it for and, me. I'll try and summarize it. Is there any, ch- oh, I, suppose, I suppose looking ahead to Anthem really, is there any way that they can differ from Destiny in terms of, can they have, can they do a tiered system where there's the same raid, say, say it's the same exact raid, but there's three different tiers, say like a low tier for lower level players, a mid tier for mid level players, and then the highest tier for the absolute elite of the game. Yeah, but have well, them all as public, but then obviously you have the option of doing like a, you know private as well. Like, yeah, so the, the thing? good thing, the good thing that I've seen from Anthem so far, and this is one of the things that it does well, in my opinion, or at least it does well at face value, because I'm hoping it, it sort of translates this way over time. Is Anthem has missions that you can play on different difficulties, right? So. Sure, the first one may, let, let's call it casual for the more sort of introductory type part of that mission. You can go back and replay it on a higher difficulty to achieve higher level things, which kind of comes back to your original point that if you run this mission on the easiest difficulty, you, you're going to get something that's capped, right? They're not going to yeah. give high level rewards for, for the easiest difficulty. Enough. So you might see a situation in Anthem where let's take a sample size of, say, six missions that there might that there's going to be more i'm sure but say you'll play through mission one to six with your friends and then you'll think hey we're, we're good enough now we're, we're high enough level to take on mission one at a high level so we'll go back and do that and therefore you'll get better rewards and you'll work through sort of systematically like that now destiny's never really done that there's a few examples of of, which, of when it's tried uh, they had three levels to the Prison of Elders DLC when that came out back in Destiny 1. And it was the exact same thing, just easy, medium, hard, if you like. But it didn't really work, and it, it didn't take off for some reason. And the, the community, whether they were sort of fresh or, or been there for ages, no one particularly liked it. And everyone kind of just ended up jumping into the highest level one anyway, because it was hard and it felt fulfilling when you did it but i quite like anthem coming at it from a different angle with its with its sort of structure to the missions because i don't know about you guys but i don't mind the idea of repeating a mission if it's actually different second time around so if i play it first time and the sort of ads in that mission are quite easy to kill and it's like here's an introduction to the game especially if it's mission one or two or three for example whilst you're just getting used to your javelin and such and then i come back to it in sort of 10 hours time and the enemies have changed they're all jacked up and they're a lot harder to kill and i get better things for doing it i don't mind that kind of repetition as long as there's a as long as there's a plateau to it if that makes sense so as long as it doesn't just keep having to be replaying the same set of missions over and over and over again i don't mind doing it every now and then because i don't mind experiencing the same mission a few times with a bunch of different changes to it and then i'd like it to stop and i'd like to see something new i think it always depends on how rewarding the actual experience is like you say you know if if it can be if it can have different elements put in and it will feel different and it, it gives you a, a different reward or an actual reason for playing it again, then that's fine. But if everything's just the same and a little bit harder, I guess that appeals to some people, but that wouldn't appeal to me. I said, it, it doesn't appeal to the majority of gamers. Like This is a, a small category of players that would even be this invested into the game. It just comes back to what I said before about fun being the main mechanic. <laughs> And we have gone into detail, like excruciating detail on Anthem, but I just hope that it's fun. Mm, I mean, like we're not talking about endgame only here, by the way. We're talking about when the game first begins. So you're going to be able to replay some of the earlier missions at higher sort of difficulty ratings. Mm. So we're not just talking about, you know, the, the people who get left at the end, if you will. It's the, it's kind of trying to appeal to everybody, I think. 
that would that would seemingly be the thing that they're trying to do. I mean, to sort of further the point on on just very briefly actually on on the sort of raid system on Destiny, they tried something called um, guided games, which was basically where a clan could take somebody who didn't have a clan and somebody who was really new, almost sort of sherpa them through these activities. And everyone thought that was really cool because it was like a way of sort of bringing the community together. And for some reason, it just fell flat on its face and didn't take off in the slightest. And that was their way of trying to sort of mix people. So I'm quite glad to see Anthem going down a different road than this and not having sort of fire team only or javelin team only raids Mm -hmm. because we've already got that you know let, let's come at it differently and i'm quite glad that they're doing so yeah I, I think that's you know the right thing to do come up with a different angle so you know it adds a bit of uh, variety to it when i am um, mm. i think the biggest problem with me with this type of game is i'm t- i don't really like the core elements and i'm obviously going in wanting a different game because i want the narrative uh, experience to be the best part so i already know that i'm going in fighting a losing battle but i am willing to give it a go just because of who it who it is being bioware and obviously the mass effect series i'm hoping that there's enough of a story to hook me and maybe as a result it can sway me on the actual you know uh the actual elements of these type of games maybe i can become a fan as a result Mm, I, I do wonder on on that point itself with the sort of narrative. I do wonder how strong it's going to be. And the reason I say that, and the reason I've got again these sort of alarm bells start to ring, is because as far as the story goes itself, the javelins, which are the suits, they sort of give the freelancers who would be us getting inside them superhuman abilities, and they've sort of tagged it as, you know, these guys are sworn to protect humanity and explore and uh, uncover mysteries and, and things like that of, of the world. That's just what you do in Destiny with the Guardians. That That's the same thing at, at its heart, right? You've got these superhuman powers for these Guardians. You're going, you're going down that tricky road again, Perks. So what you're saying after 40 <laughs> minutes of discussion is... Anthem is a Destiny clone. But I'm fleshing it out <laughs> for a reason. Rather than saying it and not... And look, it might not be, who knows. But rather than just me sit here and say, this looks like Destiny full stop, I'm providing context as to why I think that. The main bad guys, uh, the main bad faction, I believe in Anthem, they're called the Dominion, and they're going after the Anthem of Creation. They want to harness its power and control it. And that's what all the enemy factions did in Destiny with the Traveller. They were pissed off that humanity had it and they tried to take it for themselves. And it's like... It's just impossible to ignore these comparisons. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm simplifying things a bit here to sort of fit my agenda or whatever you'd say, but look, they're there. I'm, I'm not making this up. This is there for everybody to see. So... This is where I'm sort of falling between stalls with it, if you like. I'm I'm excited about the game, but I understand how it could end up. Yeah. Uh, I think, for me, I'm keeping more of an open mind, because obviously I haven't played Destiny as much as you. So I'm more hopeful I don't think that anyone it won't has. be similarly. <laughs> 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 there won't be similarities between the two as much as you're alluding to. Um, I mean, look, it, it definitely has its differences as well. I think it's important for me to at least <laughs> make that clear. When we talk about, uh, we haven't even touched on it yet, but just very briefly, when when I've looked into the sort of cosmetic side of things and the customization side of things for the for the javelins and for the suits, don't get me wrong, the similarities, it still has, you know, shaders and emotes and things like that. Um, it's even got transmat effects, which is also Destiny, but still... What's the They've, differences, Perks? What's the differences? The difference is, is that you can actually go into a lot more de- uh, detail with it. So you can customize, you know, individual sort of plates of armor and, you know, you can 
you can make things look unique rather than just apply one shader to all things and think, oh God, there's 50 people in this social space and they all look the same. So for people who actually enjoy the cosmetic side of things, which, you know, they, they do these days, it, it's not my biggest sort of appeal to a game like this. But, you know, we've seen with, with the skins in, in, in Fortnite and in Blackout whilst we've been playing that, people like to customize things, right? Yeah. So you can do a lot more of that in Anthem. There's a lot more sort of creativity to making your, uh, your javelin look like your javelin rather than just you know one of 50 in that space yeah what was i seen on the javelin there's like one supply uh part there's obviously there's six components you've got three attack parts and two guns or something like that yeah they've got two offensive slots which would be um you know grenades or you know sort of area of effect um explosives or you know whatever they've each each of the four javelins has a unique ability for those offensive and there's there's a support slot as well yeah and they've all um, got their own special ability as well haven't they yeah they've got their own special ability but you shouldn't have set me up it's called an ultimate power which is a super from destiny Let, let's not dress it up that's <laughs> oh, no. that that is the exact same thing and look whilst sometimes i may sort of use loose references an ultimate power is something that builds over time and you can unleash it to a core you know a, a mass sort of destruction or invulnerability for a short period of time do yeah, massive damage where it's a does super. this end where does this end because overwatch has a similar thing you know yeah games use similar mechanics it's like of course they do it's a destiny clone maybe like a, an oversimplification there are like core game mechanics that all of these type of games use and will continue to use and this is just my my point in, on the, on this whole sort of debate is like, is it a Destiny clone or is it just a, a game clone? A because game clone. Th- th- there's there's a lot of similar elements taken from other games, and every other game has done that. There's every game that comes out isn't completely innovative. Doesn't have an entirely new set of core mechanics. It uses what works from other games and what works from other genres and tries to reappropriate them. And that, that isn't my issue with Anthem. My, my issue is that it's not making any innovations of its own, in my personal opinion. Like, there's, there's nothing that you said to me or I've seen from Anthem that looks like it's an entirely new, innovative feature set. You know what I mean? Like, everything's similar to, to Destiny or similar to another game, you know? It's all, it's all similar elements. There's nothing that different, differentiates it Sorry, from, from its competition. And that's where I see the problem with the game. It might be a more polished version of a shared world shooter, but it's a shared world shooter that has no innovation. Mm, I think it's an important distinction to make, actually. The, and I sort of tried to sort of back that up at the beginning, right back where we started. When I say, oh, it's like Destiny or such as Destiny... Don't get me wrong, I'm under no illusions that games did this before Destiny and games do this aside from Destiny. The reason that I'm focusing so heavily on that is because that's what Anthem is going to be competing against. So whilst you can pull an example from five or ten years ago or something that exists in a completely different genre, I'm trying to sort of keep it current to what people will think when they jump into this. Mm. I, I actually disagree. agree. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say I agree with your last point. <laughs> yeah, that Anthem needs something to set it apart. Yeah, different in, in a unique way, right? But if the last thing I'll say on that is, if they do actually take a combination of things that have worked before from other games and bring it all together, I'm kind of okay with that. Well, the element I disagree with is you said that it's competing against Destiny. I don't think it is. I think it's competing against maybe the Division. But I don't think it's directly competing with Destiny. I think there's a, the, the people left playing Destiny, not many of them will ever stop playing Destiny. So th- th- there's a lot of people looking for something new to play. And I think for a lot of people, hey, some might buy both, but I know for, for me and a lot of people personally with them coming out so close together, it's like, do I get the division or do I get Anthem? That seems to be like the conundrum for a lot of, a lot of gamers. Because obviously, like, you know, in an ideal world, everyone would buy both, but you know, budgets are tight. So I think a, a lot Time of people are only be able to, well. yeah, exactly. So a, a lot of people are only going to go for one. Yeah. Like we've said before on this, on this show, haven't we, that 
generally speaking, you do actually only have time to play one of these. I'm not saying there's not people out there who are going to play two and all three, because there will be. But in a general sense, you know, life doesn't allow you to be sort of end game invested in them all, or even to be casually invested in them all. is is a massive time sink. I I still think Destiny is competition for Anthem. Destiny is similar to Anthem in the fact that it's a sci-fi experience. We've talked about this before. It's got more similarities in terms of what it actually feels and looks like than The Division. Division's like a boots on ground. If you like sort of standard shoot 'em ups then you probably go for that one. But if you're looking for a little bit more and a bit more variety to the world, you probably would go for, for Anthem or Destiny. And I do agree that sort of destiny has has the disadvantage doesn't it that it's sort of already been out and it's not new and shiny and people aren't going to see it as high up the charts so yeah look people will will be sort of jumping towards anthem and the division primarily and sort of seeing them go head to head but let's not forget when the division one actually came out and i know this released you know on its own and it didn't have an anthem with it the division one released and then slowly but surely destiny one got a sort of re-influx of players because no one liked the division. So the same thing could happen again in the I Destiny. think the same thing already has happened, but with the division one. The division's gone free to play. Um well with Game Pass. Yeah. And a lot of people have jumped back into that. So I think it's like it, it's sort of been a complete and utter opposite as as both games have gone on more people have gone to the division maybe just to revisit it because it has had a lot of updates and more people have left Destiny. So yeah, I don't it's think, I, I must admit, too many people haven't left Destiny 2 to get heavily invested into the Division 1. But people could definitely leave Destiny 2 to invest in the Division 2, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I think the final question would be, what are your th- final thoughts on it then to wrap it up? Um, I'll let the other guys go clue. first on this one. <laughs> Anthem is a Destiny clone, as discussed in detail by James Perkins. He's come prepared with his documents, and he has very eloquently elaborated the similarities between both the games. I think the final thing I'd say on the game is, I suppose now all we can do is wait and see. That's all we can do. So, you know, all this talking, all all we can do now is just wait for the final product to release and... Well, you know, we'll be the judge of it, I suppose. And, it, and yeah. if it's fun, I'll be yeah. smiling. And if it's boring, I will <laughs> trade the game in. <laughs> Everyone wants to see Happy Man, Matt. Yeah, well, you're the Happy Man, Perks. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, look, I could be way off the mark on all of this. I guess at the end of the day, it's down to personal opinion. But I'm just thinking if they deliver a product that's going to be full of similarities, that have turned off wider wider audiences in the past, then look, why isn't it going to happen again? You know, what's changed? What's different? Um, I think I'll probably like it regardless, because like I said at the beginning, I do like games like this, but I want this to be more about that wider audience rather than just a hardcore bunch of players. And I think they're walking a very tight rope based on what they've shown so far. And that doesn't mean to say that I think the game's going to be shit or anything like that. But look, learn from others' mistakes in the past. Yeah, I d- definitely. I think that's something that they can look to do, um, or they probably already have looked to do even. Uh, for me, I'm keeping an open mind. Obviously, I haven't been as... Oh, well, I was going to use the word tainted by destiny to <laughs> form an opinion that is very similar, if you know what I mean. But So I'm going in fresh. I'm, I'm hoping the game will be good. And yeah, keeping an open mind, like I said. Well, that turned out to be an Anthem special. Um, Perks definitely got his points across. Um, Well, appreciate that, Perks. You know, we went into depth and obviously you were able to defend yourself. Well, not defend yourself, but um, express your opinions a bit more clearly and in depth. Yeah, really just sort of providing some context as to what I said before. And look, the Anthem special could last an hour to three days. I mean, there's enough time for things like that with all that's within the game. But I hope that does provide a little bit more context than just a small couple of minute snippet from last time out. Yeah, I, th- I think it will. And obviously people can disagree or agree with that. Um, anyway, thank you for listening, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the Anthem special and look out for our podcast that will be coming out this week as well. Bye. 
See you guys.